However, if x were to equal zero, then the denominator would be zero, which causes great problems. So we eliminate the zero and just say that x equals one. We now plug this point back into the original function of f. We get then that f of one equals four times one minus two over one. We get four minus two over one, which is in fact two. So the ordered pair then is one comma two. Part C. In part C, we are given that f of x equals x squared over x squared plus one. Again, we're using the quotient rule. We end up with f prime of x equals 2x cubed plus 2x minus 2x cubed. The 2x, whoa. And this is all over x squared plus one squared. The two x cubes cancel, giving us two x over x squared plus one squared. And we want to set this equal to zero again. Thus, we see two x must equal zero, x must equal zero. We do want to check by plugging this back into our denominator and see that our denominator will not be zero when this happens. So x equals zero is okay. To find what ordered pair this is, we plug zero back into the original function. We get zero over zero plus one, which is zero. So the ordered pair is zero comma zero. Okay, problem seven. Let's look at what the worksheet wants for problem seven. Problem seven, we want to find the equation of the tangent lines to the graph of y equals x plus one over x minus one that are parallel to the line two y plus x equals six. Okay. First thing we want to realize is that we want to be parallel to the line two y plus x equals six. This means we want to have the same slope as this line. So we can rearrange this line, finding that y equals negative one half x plus three. So this line has a slope of negative one half. This means that the tangent lines we're looking for need to have this kind of slope. So the derivative of f of x, which we'll set equal to x plus one over x minus one, must have a slope of negative one half. So f prime of x needs to equal negative one half. First, we want to find what f prime of x is. We use the quotient rule. We find that f prime of x equals x minus one minus x minus one. And since this is quotient, that's all over x minus one squared. Well, our x's cancel, leaving us with negative two over x minus one squared. We know we want our derivative to be a negative one half. So we have the equation negative two over x minus one squared equals negative one half. We can cross multiply giving us negative four equals negative x minus one squared. Multiply both sides by negative one. And we end up with x minus one equals plus or minus the square root of two. I'm sorry, the square root of four. So x minus one equals plus or minus two. 